Hello everyone, I hope you're well. I'm so excited to film this. This is my June book reviews video and I read so much in June. I have no idea why I went on such a reading binge, but I have so many reviews. So I'm going to get straight into it because I'm like surrounded by a sea of books. So I read Paris My Sweet, A Year in the City of Light and Dark Chocolate by Amy Thomas. This is non-fiction and this is about Amy's life just following her for one year. So she lives a dream sex in the city kind of lifestyle. She lives in a New York apartment, but she's from like a small town. She's done really well for herself, Amy Thomas, let me tell you that first. She's also a copyright writer and she gets offered a job in Paris. It's a year contract and it's to work for Louis Vuitton as copyright writer. So she decides that's what I'm gonna do. She's 34 years old, she's not married, she has no children. But she does make it clear that she does want children. They are part of her life and future. Now this is a year in her life, but it's not written in diary entry format or anything like that. She just talks about like the experiences that impacted her in different ways in that year. She also runs a blog, which is all about like, sweet treats. And this is really what this book is about. She's eating her way through Paris. <laughs> Like literally that's what she's doing. In the back of it, it has addresses of the actual places she went to in Paris. This is such a good guide. If you are going on holiday to Paris or New York, this is like the best place you can get like macaroons, cupcakes, cookies, loads of different sweet treats. She has the, all the addresses, the New York and Paris ones in the back. And it's about her conflict of, I'm from like a small town in America, I'm American, yet I'm living in Paris and the cultural differences within that. And also her love for New York and her love for Paris and how they're very different cities and the difference between them is about French culture, it's about sweet treats, it also goes into the history of them. So the format is, she'll think, oh, I'm going to go and do macaroons today. And then she'll talk about her experience of having macaroons in New York. And that place will be referenced in the back of the book. And then in Paris, she'll go and get macaroons. But she'll tell you the history of that business and the histories of these businesses. Like, I think Paris is one of the most magical places in the world. I'm just going to say it now. But the history of them is so magical and lovely as well. I really like, at the back of it, it's got like a little Paris map. And then at the front of it, it's got a New York City map. I think that's a really cute, lovely bit within it. I thought this was really nice. Another thing, which is a big plot in it, which you're reading it and it reads a bit like a cosmopolitan magazine. Like everything's lovely, everything's glamorous. She's got a dream life, like well done, Amy. <laughs> everything's going well. And then she's thinking about her future and she's thinking about her last relationships. And she's thinking, oh crap, I'm 34 years old and I want kids, but I'm not married. Uh, how clock's ticking how am I going to do this what you know it's not just going to materialize I'm going to have to take proactive actions to either get myself pregnant do it myself or find a man so she goes on all these dates in Paris and she can't seem to click with anyone and then she's thinking about her past relationships and thinking if I would have stayed with that man would I be a mother and I wouldn't be living in my glamorous New York apartment, I wouldn't be able to take this year out to Paris. It's the pros and cons of children. That if she had children, she wouldn't be able to take a year out, go live this fabulous, gorgeous life in Paris. But she wants children and so she's kind of looking at that and then she kind of comes to the conclusion that she doesn't want children, she thinks it's just something you have to do, is like get married and have kids and she's grateful for her life but she's still it, it kind of ends, because obviously it's just a year in the life, so you don't know what happens the rest of her life. Don't, I'm going to start glue in like her, like mad. But you don't know if she went on to have children. I don't think she did. But it's kind of just left, like, we'll see what will happen. I've had an amazing time in Paris. Here's a whole list of, like, bakeries and chocolatiers and tea rooms and here's some stuff of New York as well that's it and she also talks about her parents oh, she talks about so much like it's not just about chocolate and sweet treats this is marketed at the back of the book of being like a guide to paris's chocolate and sweet it's so much more than that it's about like women and how you can't have children forever and you've got to make a choice career like changing your whole lifestyle to become a mother or not doing that make the choice is up to you and i just i really did like this this was such an easy read i flew through it really like recommend that i think it was really interesting how it was like sweet and light but oh, look at me talking in chocolate girl sweet and light and then it also had real like life things mixed within it really did enjoy that i then have flower fairies of the winter by cecile mary barker and these are basically poems that she did 
there's the poem, there's the picture, and they're about flowers and the fairies that go with them. It's just so English and quaint and gorgeous, and I loved these books as a ch child. So this is the song of the plain tree fairy, and then it have a little rhyme about that fairy to do with the plant. Cannot recommend these enough. They are so gorgeous. So I got the winter one, picked up in a charity shop, swiped it. Absolutely love it. So I can recommend that, or I then have a thriller. Okay, an act of silence. This was sent to me by Wildfire Publishers. It was just sent to me in the post. Give it a read. This is by Colette Macbeth. This is told by so many different people. First off, I don't think there needed to be that many like characters telling their side of the story. I felt like some of the characters had the same story because they were part of like the whole deed and everything together. So I only need one of them to say. This really centres around a woman called Linda. She used to be Home Secretary, which is a Member of Parliament, is a high up Member of Parliament in the UK government. So powerful woman. Then she had a bit of a scandal, at the beginning we don't really know what it is, I'm not going to spoil this book for you, um, but she lost her job. So now she's at home. Her son comes in one night, and this happens in the first story, and says, there's a dead body of a woman that I kind of slept with and it was found at the allotments at the back of my house. Can you help me? And she's thinking, oh my God, did my son, is my son telling me to help him hide a body? He said he didn't kill her, but it's all like he slept with the woman. She was found at the back of her, his house dead. He's, he is a bit of a rogue and she's kind of thinking, is my son literally telling me, can you help me hide a body of a woman I've killed? Or is this some kind of accident and he's been planted? It's all just very bizarre right at the beginning. And he comes to her because he says, I need to borrow your car because I'm going to go on the run. So straight away you're thinking, wait, sunny boy, but you didn't do it. Why are you going on the run? So that straight away was a bit like, hmm, I, mm, mm. like it's a weird thing together. Like you slept with her and that same night she's found dead. I get it. But I don't think your immediate reaction would be get in a car, go on the run. I just, that thing started it a bit odd. And then it's all connected to something to do with Linda. So it goes into her scandal, but then it also goes into other scandals that she helped cover up. And why she covered up those scandals, it goes into child sexual abuse. And many people think that the UK government hides a lot of the human trafficking and sex trafficking of children. Uh, people are just very much into that theory that the government does hide it for money. They get massive amounts of money to turn a blind eye to those things. So it kind of delves into that, but in a very small way. It's not as like mass industries. It's just like in a smaller way. It delves into that. It delves into secrets. It delves into keeping horrendous secrets to like save your family members. But I thought this was really interesting and I was engaged when I was reading it and it's all different people's sides and some people are really evil and some people are really good and they've been treated really bad and it goes all into that. But I think that conscience is a huge thing that doesn't get brought up in these thrillers. So someone will hold a terrible secret, they'll know that someone has been abused terribly as like a child and they'll hold that secret and they won't tell anyone. I think your conscience would catch up with you. I think when you have your own children, your conscience would go, oh my God, I can't keep this inside. And I think in real life, people have breakdowns over that kind of stuff. They turn to drink, they turn to addiction. They, you know, have massive meltdowns because they can't keep the secrets and they realize how evil it was. I just didn't think it was realistic. Next up, I have a book that I've spoken about so much on the channel, but I don't think I've done an actual review for it. And I reread it this month, and this is Oprah Winfrey, What I Know For Sure. This is non-fiction, and it's Oprah talking about her life. So how this book came to be, one, it's a gorgeous book. It's like my Bible. I love it. But she was asking in an interview, what do you know for sure? You know so much, and you give some great advice. But what are the things that you actually know for fact, for sure? And so this is sort of a series of short stories, really, about her life, about her friend's life. She talks about Gail a lot, who's her friend. She talks about her partner, who she's been with for a really long time, who Oprah's been with. And it's just about the people around her and her childhood and things that she has learnt in life that she's like, I know this for sure. I know that if you don't value yourself, no one else will. It's that kind of stuff, like moral things that you can help guide you throughout life. She's very religious, so religion does come up. She says stuff like, 
if you don't believe in God, then it's going to be difficult for you to succeed, realise that you're that, and I don't believe in God, so those bits didn't resonate with me, but so much of it did, if you don't know like about Oprah Winfrey, she had a huge show, she was the first black billionaire in America, but she, her childhood, she was sexually abused, and she was also raised by her grandma, her mum didn't raise her, her grandma did and her grandma was desperately poor and so she used to make her clothes out of potato sacks like that really rough material and she had a really rough upbringing and then she decided she was just gonna make it she got herself on every television set and she started in local news she got herself on the radio first she just decided this is what I want to do I want to talk to people and engage with people so I'm gonna do it and then Oprah Winfrey obviously the show became a massive success Oprah and I just love this because it is so raw and it's so honest and there are times in this when she says like I did this wrong and this this happened because I allowed it to happen so there's a bit in it when she was in a really abusive relationship and she talks about how her friend Gail was like get out of this relationship you shouldn't be in it and how, how she's like I allowed this person to treat me badly it doesn't make it right it doesn't mean that people should treat each other badly but you have to realise your part in that. And that's not blaming like the victim or stuff, that's just saying just realise your worth and that you're better than that. And oh, there's so many stories in this though that are like so beautiful and good. So I just wanted to mention it in here because I reread it this month and I love it, but I've mentioned it a million times. Can we now get on to the Agatha Christie because I read two Miss Marples this month. I can't stop. When I read one Agatha Christie, I just get so engaged and I love her work so much, I go on a binge. I'm now reading Body in the Library, <laughs> like I can't stop myself. So, first up, I read this. This is Agatha Christie and Miss Marple one, and this is called A Caribbean Mystery. Sorry if the camera's moved a little bit, I basically put another battery in the camera because we're going to be here a long time, like I haven't even got through the majority of the reviews yet. Sit down, get cosy. So, as I was saying, the West Indies, she's on holiday, the nephew has paid for her to go to the West Indies, he's not there with her, but it's just very generous. She's on this holiday by herself. So she's there, she's lapping up the sun, she's loving it, it's paradise on earth, she's in the restaurant having a great time someone gets murdered and then the story begins. First up she has a strange conversation with this man and it's all a bit disjointed and odd and he's trying to tell her a story and he's saying I have a picture of a murderer in my wallet and she's like what on earth are you talking about? And he said I just carry it around like kind of a relic, kind of a souvenir but this person is a murderer and he goes to show her the picture and he never shows her the picture. So like right at the beginning you're kind of thinking is it someone on the holiday with them or is he remembering that it didn't quite happen like that and then he gets killed very early on and so she's thinking is it something to do with our disjointed conversation because he was going to show it to her and then there's like people around and there's all the guests around and he looks around and then doesn't because the person recognised him or what is that whole situation about I'm not going to say a lot it's a murder mystery it's Marple it's Agatha Christie enjoy it like I feel like every time I read Agatha Christie I just love it I just seep into the story it's just enjoyable it's great writing you know the plot's going to be well thought out you know it's going to be full of twists and turns you know it's going to be good like there's nothing more that I can really say about it because it is so good so her and this man Mr Raphael they he's a very sick man and he's kind of close to death it's described as and her and him kind of team up and they don't know each other but they team up to solve the murder mystery. I don't want to say anything else because I really don't want to ruin it. So I'm going to put the book down now. Loved it. Thought it was so good. Then I thought, oh, you know me, Agatha Binge. Can't read one, gotta read another one. So I just picked up this one that was on my shelf. I was like, Nemesis, okay, I'll give this a go, Agatha Christie. This one's based in England. And oh my god, is connected to a Caribbean mystery. Like the weirdest coincidence that is in the world. So Mr. Raphael, who helps her like solve the murder in this book, he dies in this book and he's not in it. He writes her a letter and it's after his death and she's like, oh, that's the man I was on holiday with before, but we really didn't know each other. We, you know, formed this kind of friendship and he knew that I was quite a good little sleuth. Um, but we didn't we didn't know each other. He writes her a letter and he says, I want you to help me with something, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I throw the letter in the bin. <laughs> like, that was 
me, I'd be like, what? But it's Marple. So she's kind of, it's weighing on her. She's thinking, what is it? Why doesn't he just tell me what he wants me to do? So you kind of know it's to do with a murder. It's some kind of mystery. Because the only time Marple and Mr. Raphael have met is on holiday when a murder mystery happened. That's it. They don't have any mutual friends. They don't know each other. It's only that. So the only reason he would be writing to her to say, I need you to help me saying, would be to do with a mystery, a murder, solving something. So he obviously knows that she's great at solving things and after his death, this letter gets sent and the story begins. And so she goes on this coach trip and she feels like, oh, it's all organised, I should go to go along with Mr. Raphael. But what am I looking for? There is no murder happening. There is no mystery right in front of my eyes what is happening and for quite a bit of it there isn't a murder she's just hearing stories of like a previous murder that happened years before and she's thinking is this in some way connected and it is and then and then the murder starts obviously <laughs> it's an agatha christie but it's more about a, a historic murder and someone who got charged with that historic murder and her kind of thinking did that person do that terrible like serial killing murders can i say one thing i've just remembered about this absolutely loved it, it's like first off loved it, thought it was fantastic, it's Agatha Christie, you're gonna love it like every time I mention Agatha Christie, I'll just put this here as the benchmark it's gonna be good, it's gonna be great, it just is, I just love her stuff uh, my favourite is probably still though, Halloween Party which is a poro which is so good, it is so entangled, I love that one but these other two are really good as well, so in this, rape is mentioned. Now that's not very, like, Agatha Christie, which we talk about, like, brutal murders and all this different stuff, but, like, rape isn't normally mentioned. It's not mentioned in the way that me and you will think about it. Because someone says something right at the beginning, and they say, oh, girls are getting so much easier to rape nowadays. And it's shocking. Like, as a modern reader, you're like, what? But obviously it's of its time and then you find out later on what rape actually is and rape isn't what we think of it nowadays rape is a girl having consensual sex with a boy them not being married and her mum telling her say it's rape when the boy dumps her because he's marred your name and you're going to find it very difficult to get married and he's had sex with you and chucked you and gone off say it's rape so that's what this is it's a cultural thing of the time it's not what we think of it now. So that's why he's saying they're so much easier to believe. I don't even want to say the word, but they're so much easier. It's because they're not true cases. Like, more girls are having sex out of wedlock, so there's more of these cases happening. So let me just say it first, because first off, is someone who you kind of like, and then he says something quite shocking, and you're like, oh, whoa well, there, Mary. This is also told from Miss Marple and Mr. Raphael's solicitors, so it kind of flits that narrative absolutely freaking loved it i love it when people talk about miss marple when she's not there and they're like what a weird little old lady isn't she odd and the thing about marple is she always pretends that she's dumb so she'll know what's going on and she just needs one more piece of the puzzle and she'll go oh i don't know anything i'm just i'm just this old woman i oh there was a murder here years ago i've never heard of it let them tell me tell me and she like plays being very naive and then you can hear the people's thoughts afterwards because when she leaves sometimes a short paragraph and it'll be like that miss marple she's very naive oh she's not very up to modern days and stuff like that but obviously she understands the whole thing she just plays it to get information oh i really really like this also her like housemaid cherry i've watched a lot of the tv adaptations is cherry in any of the tv adaptations at all let me know i feel like i've spoken about agatha for so much now loved it but really good really good one and also so weird that Mr. Raphael was in like both of them or this thing so next up let's do a graphic novel I've got Marbles this is a non-fiction graphic novel it's a memoir it's about Ele Eleanor Forney and she has bipolar so this is called Marbles Mania, Depression, Michelangelo and Me now Eleanor is a artist and so in this is all her art absolutely let me try and show you like gorgeous art, loved it and these are from her sketchbook when she was at really bad times so she draws herself like looking like a beast and a monster and it's really about her coping with bipolar it takes you through all the medication that she takes so at the beginning when she's told she has bipolar she doesn't want to take medication because she's this creative artist and she doesn't want it to suppress her art it then gets so bad that she has to take medication and then it takes you through the different medications and how they affected her and the side effects and the struggle and everything to do with that one thing that I found really interesting is she talks about what is my mental health condition and what is me so am I doing this because I have bipolar and I, I'm impulsive or am I doing this because I want to do it I found that really raw and honest 
thought this was really good. I thought there were amazing moments. I loved the pictures that she'd put in from her actual sketchbook of how she was drawing herself looking and like self-hatred and extreme depression and extreme mania. It was just a really interesting book. I really did enjoy this. And also there's so much humour because Eleanor's very funny as a person, just a naturally funny woman. So there's so much humour in it, even though it's very dark and very raw, it's just loved it i really really liked it oh let me just say though all my pages fell out of my copy like all the pages came out so i don't know if that, that's obviously a publishing error or something tell me if any of you have read it and the pages have come out but it was really good now let's do it's light-hearted up a little bit it's one of my videos so i don't get very light-hearted like murder death deceit abuse Garfield. This is by Jim Davis. Garfield is obviously the ginger cat. There's Garfield and this is just a volume. This is volume three of Garfield comics. It's a new volume. It is so funny. I actually got this on sale from I think um, Open Planet. I got it on sale there and it was a pound for like the whole volume because they were doing this weird little like flash sale thing and I absolutely love this. I smiled from start to finish. I didn't think I was going to love it as much as I did but every story was just so funny and Garfield's like this fat lazy cat who just eats all the time and I just loved it. I loved the art style. I felt like I was watching like Cartoon Network. I really liked how fun and lovely it was and it really brightened my day and I've read it twice since then because when I'm feeling like a little bit low or down I will pick this up or my Bob's Burgers comic I'll pick that up because they're just fun lovely switch off reads it's like watching a cartoon like it's just it's just nice it's just comforting so I really liked Garfield and that's my first ever Garfield thing at all loved it next up oh i've really spoken about this is girl online by zoe suck aka zoella i like this it's about a girl called penny who her parents go away to new york and she goes to new york with her best friend with them for work and she meets this boy called noah and love ensues it's a ya i've done a whole video on it i liked this i really did i feel like it's so harshly critiqued because it's zoella and people don't like her i also like how sassy my one is because someone's put the word honey across <laughs> so that's one of my faves I then have Yuki Means Happiness by Alison Jean Lester. This is about an American woman called Diane. She lives in America, she works as a nurse, and then someone that she used to work with, who's a Japanese man, says, my wife has had a baby, can you come and look after the baby, but only for a short amount of time. So she looks after the baby, and it's about the cultural differences there, but it's only like a few months it's kind of described as. Diane, our main character, she's very kind of girl-like, and naive in very, like, many different ways, and she's in this on and off relationship with this guy. Two years later, she gets a phone call from the man whose baby she looked after, and he says, can you come over and live in Japan and be our au pair? Are you interested in doing that? And she decides, yes, it will be an interesting cultural thing to do with her life. So she moves to Japan. The first bit is about her being an American in Japan and the cultural differences there. And then it goes into her suspecting that some kind of abuse happening to the little girl, the two year old she's looking after something's not right so there's a series of little things that happen within the house that she's thinking that's odd is that a cultural difference or is there something wrong there i'm not sure i'm a foreigner in this country so i don't know their culture i don't know what they think is right and wrong to do i have no idea and so then she just realizes little things about the little girl and you kind of pace it together at the same time as her i liked the way it was done it wasn't like you know some things you have loads of warning signs but the main character can't see it and it's blind to it and it's really irritating with this the main character reacts to each little thing that happens she's like oh I'm not sure I'd do that and we don't do that in America and I'm not mm. and then she kind of has to like get over her like feeling like oh I'm a westerner and all this different stuff and be like whoa this isn't culturally what they do in Japan this is something bad there is child abuse within the book so let me say that like first off and you do get that feeling kind of right away you kind of something happens and you're a bit like Oh, I don't know if that's kind of normal and the um, little girl's dad he has divorced the little girl's mum and the little girl's mum is not allowed to see her and so it's just the dad and the little girl and his parents who live next door and then now Diane comes into this like weird situation where the little girl can't speak to her mum but her mum loves her and wants to see her and it's a really weird position for Diane to be in so she's kind of dealing with that she's dealing with this relationship long-term relationship with her boyfriend who still lives in America and they're very on and off and then she's dealing with thinking is this girl being abused or am I just reading too much in this what's going on here 
I really enjoyed this. I did, but I, I wasn't satisfied with it. Like, you know when you read a book and you're enjoying it whilst you're reading it? And I had to find out what was happening. Even in, like, bad bits, I had to know what was happening and what the whole situation was. But then at the end of it, I was left a little bit like... Mm. Like, I, I don't I don't know what happened at the end because the end is kind of open-ended in a way. And I just didn't feel satisfied with the book. I didn't get that feeling of kind of, like justice or I don't know there's a difficult one to review I think this is about child abuse and I don't read anything about child abuse really ever only if it's mentioned like a little bit in a thriller or a murder mystery I don't read something that's a literary fiction around that subject so maybe it's that maybe I haven't had that exposure to it but I do think it was good like I can't say it's a bad book I think it's a really interesting read and interesting book and it's an interesting take on where is your job as the au pair if you are an au pair where do you stand because obviously you're in a foreign country you're in a different culture you have to realize what's the culture and what's you know your culture is different from that and are you an author authority like you're not the parent what do you do about that whole situation I thought this was interesting. It's a really difficult one to review. I love this book. This was sent to me by the publishers. This was sent to me by John Murray. So thank you, John Murray. And it was it was interesting, but I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. I then oh my god, books falling everywhere. I then read Raspberries on the Yancey. This is by Karen Wallace. Cute little cover. And it's basically about this little girl's like playing about. That's all I can really explain it, to be honest with you. It's set in Canada and it's about this little girl who's like a tomboy. She's like Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird, but there's no poignancy in this book, like To Kill a Mockingbird. So imagine a book about Scout pissing about with her friends, hearing little bits of gossip, being like, oh, that's interesting, oh, that's interesting, doing nothing with that information, and that's it. That's the situation. I felt that there were good bits and near the end I was like oh my god yes because as an adult you could tell what was happening but because she's a child she doesn't quite get it so one of the girls she's an older girl she's a teenage girl something's happening with the teenage girl and her and the girl's sister they're talking about it and like what is happening with her and her boyfriend and it's an odd situation but I can't work out what what's happening but as an adult you fully understand what's happening and then the story ends. And I just thought, oh god, like I was waiting for something to get my teeth into, to really grip in the book, and then it ended. And I felt like it could have been so good if they followed that storyline and what was happening there, but it just, it was kind of revealed, ended, no tie up, nothing really to do with it. It was like a snapshot into childhood. It didn't feel like a full book to me. I thought it was interesting, like the little girls talking about what they think sex is, and obviously they have no idea what sex is, so they're making up these ridiculous things. I felt all those were really funny, and there were such funny elements within it. But there was nothing of substance, and there was nothing that gripped me like it took me a long time to read this because there was no gripping storyline it was just literally this girl like this Yancey is a little place where they play and like pick raspberries and they were just playing about and that was it there was nothing to get involved in there was nothing to think oh I wonder what's gonna happen next nothing like that it was just little girls playing and it had a niceness to it they're like friendships and fallouts and little stuff like that but there was nothing to keep my interest going and so I didn't really enjoy that one to be honest. I then read um, Leo Tolstoy's The Krug Sonata. Sonata? I don't know how to say that. This is my first Tolstoy book. This is about a man who's on a train at the beginning and they're talking about like men and women and the place of men and women and he's saying oh men need to control women, they need to control their wives and all these people are kind of outraged and then this man on the train is just him and another man because everyone leaves the carriage. And he says to him, oh, you know, he's talking about this murder case where this man married, murdered his wife. And the man who was all like, men need to control their wives is like, yeah, I'm the murderer. And then tells him the story of why he murdered his wife. So you know it's going to be a murder story. He basically gets really jealous. And I don't really get why he murdered her. Like, she's very beautiful. Um, and she's had children with him and everything and all these other men are interested in her and then he like flies out in a rage at her he's really getting very enraged throughout the whole book I really enjoyed this like even though I don't think there was like that much going on obviously there's murder like <laughs> that's quite a lot I think for me the writing is like what won me over with this whole thing I loved the writing I loved the wording I loved the show of his emotions in his words but there was, there's not a lot of plot to talk to you about, but I did really enjoy this book. I'm really glad that I read it. 
I did enjoy it. It was a good read. I then read, this is a short story collection, and this is The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. The Bloody Chamber and Other Stories. So The Bloody Chamber is the first one, and it's kind of like a novella, and these are retellings of well-known fairy tales, but with a feminist spin. So the prince doesn't come and save the princess, maybe her mum will come and save her. And it's different stuff like that. And oh my god, I loved it. I don't like fairy tales. Fairy tales aren't for me at all. This was for me 100%. I was shocked that I liked this. I've had this on my shelf for so long. People have said, if you read it, you're going to like it and all that. And I thought, no, because I don't like fairy tales. And it's retellings of fairy I just thought, Oof, I can't be bothered with retellings. I feel like it's such a trend. Blah, blah, blah. Loved it. Oh my god, it was so engaging. There was one of Beauty and the Beast, which I love. There was Puss and Beast. Like, oh my god. So good. I can't even tell you. The Bloody Chamber ripped my heart out. I loved it. So it takes the idea, so each of them are the fairy tale, like plot. They're of this very naive young girl who this man comes along and he's a prince and he whisks her away and everything's not quite as it seems and you know things go bad. Obviously in the original fairy tales it's like death and destruction and if you've read Hand Christian Anderson, The Little Mermaid, it's terrible, it's so sad, it's awful. But in this, she gets like, she saves herself, she, her mum, like it's just, I don't want to ruin it because I feel like I'm going to ruin it, but it is so good. The Bloody Chamber was really good. I mean, I really, really loved that. So it's about a, a girl lives with this man and everything's going well, he's quite a bit older than her and he's had other wives who have died. And she's living in his house. He's like sailing away and then he gives her a load of keys and he says, you can open any room you want in the whole entire house, you are now my wife but don't open this chamber. Here's the key for it, don't open it, whatever you do. Of course she opens it, she's young, she's naive, she opens it, she sees terrible things within it. So when she opens the door, she's living in this fear because she's living with this man and she sees terrible things in the chamber and it's about all that and that whole conflict. Oh my God, I just, I just adored it. I did like, I can't talk about how much I love it because I honestly adored it and I'm in shock because I'm not a fairy tale person. I find them too repetitive. I find them boring. I find them very samey. But this, oh my God, this was so good. I love Hank Christian Anderson, The Little Mermaid though. Let me say that that is like one of the greatest fairy tales of all times. This was so good. And this is in the same category as Living by the Word, which is a short story collection by Alice Walker, where I loved every single short story. And I've never read a short story collection where I've loved every short story ever again since that one. Because short story collections, yeah, they're hit and miss. Whereas this, I loved every single one. I cannot recommend you buy this enough. I love it. So that's it. That's the end of this video. I feel like it's been exceptionally long because I read so many books in June. Tell me if you liked this video. Tell me what your best book in June was. What was a book that just you was going to live with you forever? It's going to be your best books of the year. You just soaked it up and adored it. I read so many books that I really enjoyed and that were good. Obviously, I've read some that I didn't as well. But I think overall, I had a really good reading month. That is the end of this video. I'm going to let you go because I've been talking at you for too long. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below and I'll see you again very soon for another video.